whether you're just starting out in filmmaking or you're an experienced filmmaker. Working with light and using it effectively is often one of the most challenging parts of the process. Now there's a lost art to working with light, and that is the light meter. Light meters let us objectively measure the light and break it down into different components. By doing that, it makes it a lot easier to find out the light we're seeing and how that shows up on our camera. So what we really want to share with you is how you can use a light meter to take this complex facet of filmmaking, lighting, and make it much more approachable. Now before we get into how a light meter actually works, we need to understand the units that a light meter is measuring, and that's going to be a stop of light. Now a stop of light is a unit that's used to quantify the amount of light or lighting ratios, and we'll get into lighting ratios a little bit later. But what you really need to know is that when you increase a stop of light, you are doubling the amount of light. If you take away a stop of light, you are halving the light, or cutting it in two. Now if we look at stops of light, we can look at them in our aperture, our ISO, or our shutter speed. Now the different f-stops, the full f-stops, are going to be f1, 1, 4, 2.0, 2.8, f4, 5.6, f8, f11, f16, f22, and it continues. Now the different stops in ISO and shutter speed are very easy. For ISO it's 100, 200, 400, 800, 1600, 3200. For shutter speed it starts at 1 30th, 1 60th, 1 1 25th, 1 2 50th, 1 500th, 1 1 thousandth, 1 2 thousandth, 4 thousandths, and so on. We can take this understanding of stops of light in your aperture, your shutter speed, and your ISO, and we can use that to make effective decisions when we're actually shooting in the field. Let's take the example of shooting in a dimly lit situation and we're shooting dancing footage. Now, we're shooting at f2, 160th of a second, and ISO 800, and we've decided that we want to have a high shutter to really accentuate the motion of the dancing. So we want to go from, let's say, 160th to 1 250th. Now, how much light is that? Well, if we remember going back to our different stops of light, it goes 160, 125th, 250th. So therefore, we, we need to add two stops of light coming in because we're taking away two stops of light as we increase our shutter speed. So what most people would normally do is they roll their shutter up to 1 250th, then they would just mess with the aperture, and they would mess with the ISO until it looks right. Whereas if we just think about it for a second, we can make these decisions, and we don't even have to check our exposure, we know it's going to be right, assuming it was right when we started. So we're losing two stops of light by increasing our shutter speed. So we have to make up two stops of light. We could do that with our ISO, going from ISO 800 to 1600 one stop, 3200 two stops. There we go, we'd be all set. But you might decide, I don't want to go all the way up to ISO 3200 because that'll be a little noisy. So instead, why don't we bring our ISO up to 1600? We just made up one stop of light. So well, let's make up the other stop of light in our aperture, and we'll go from f2 to 1.4. So really quickly, we can change our lens to 1.4, our ISO to 1600, and our shutter speed to 250th, and we're going to have the exact same exposure as our original settings. Now there's a little bit of math involved here, but the point is, when you really think through these things, you're going to be really confident in your decisions, and you're really going to feel like you made the choice of how you're filming something. Now let's get into light meters. And light meters are going to be great to really help you connect what you're seeing through your camera to what is objectively coming in. You've probably heard of light ratios, one to one, a two to one ratio, a four to one ratio, but using a light meter will let you objectively tell what the ratio is and connect that to what you're seeing on the camera. That's gonna help you communicate much better to everybody else you're shooting with. It's also gonna allow you to have a lot of consistency. Say you're doing a shoot that requires a lot of interviews spread out over time. By using a light meter, you can decide on the ratio and the look and feel you want, and you can recreate that exactly across time and across locations. So let's get started with actually using the light meter. First thing we're gonna do is turn it on, and then we have to set two of the three factors that combine to make our exposure. So that's aperture, shutter speed, and ISO. So if we choose to set the shutter speed and the ISO, it will then tell us the proper aperture to set our camera at. Then we have two options for the meter on top here. I can expose the dome or I can retract the dome. Now by exposing the dome, we're going to get an overall reading. And by retracting it, I'm going to get readings of specific light sources. So let's start by exposing the dome. We'll point it towards the camera and we'll take a reading. Now what that's going to tell us, again, placing it at the subject, pointing towards the camera, is that we should set our camera to roughly 2 8 and 9 tenths of a stop, or roughly f4. Now you want to keep in mind that the light meter is telling you what is middle gray. 
So for an interview and for skin tones, you generally want to go about one stop over. So remember, for an F4, we want to take away a stop. That would be 2.8. So we'd set our camera right now at 1 48th of a second, 640 ISO, which we input into the meter, and it's telling us to set it at 2.8. Without even having to set up a camera, we can already get our settings and be confident in what we're doing. So now that we've talked about some of the basic functions of a light meter, let's get into some more advanced ways that they can help you. And for that, we're gonna start with the L478D, which is our absolute favorite meter that Siconic makes because it features a touch screen here. And it makes getting used to light meters and working with them so approachable and so, so easy. So I'm gonna turn on the light meter here, and this one, just like the 758, has a retractable dome. Now we talked last about using the dome exposed to get an ambient reading. Now we're gonna turn this and retract the dome, and this is gonna let us get a reading of our individual light sources. And this is where the power of a light meter is really, really huge. So what I'm gonna do is point this towards my one light here to my right, and I'll get a reading. And that is saying 4.5. Now I'm gonna point it to the light to my left, and I'll get a reading. And that says 4.5. So what that tells me is that the exposure is the same on the left and right. And as you're looking at this, you probably notice that it looks pretty flat. There's no shape. That's because we have an even ratio. And now we can start talking about lighting ratios and how we connect the light coming in to the look and feel that it has in your film. Now, these meters have a very nice function to help you really figure out your lighting ratios. And that is this delta symbol. And what that allows us to do is take the reading right here. So I'm gonna take the reading of this light and it says 4.5, and then I'm gonna store this into the memory by hitting the button over here. Now that it's stored into my memory, I can hit the change button, and when I take another reading, it'll actually compare the first one to the second one, and right now it says zero, which means there's no change. Now as we change these lights, you'll notice that we'll actually get a difference in our readings from the left to the right hand side. And as we change those ratios, it's gonna to start to look and feel differently. And that's how we can really start communicating with our team and get consistency across shoots. So in order to do that, we're gonna use what's called a double net. And a double net removes one stop of light, or effectively halves the light. So what we'll do is we'll put a double net in front of this light here, which will cut it in half, and then we would expect that this light will be twice as bright as this light, therefore giving us a two to one ratio. So let's do that and take a look at how it looks. So we took our two perfectly balanced lights and we added a double net to the light on the left. So what that did is took one stop away or cut the light in half. So now what you're looking at is a two to one ratio, but we're gonna use our light meter to verify that. Now what we can do is we'll take a reading on this side and we get a reading of 3.2. Now this was 4.5 and that was 3.2. So it gets a little bit tough to work through in your head what's the difference between 4.5 and 3.2 in stops. That's where this delta symbol really comes in handy because that's going to calculate the change from this light, this reading, to this light. So we're going to hit the delta symbol. We already had this reading of 4.5 stored. Then when we select a reading on this light, it says minus 1. Now this is exposure value or stops. So minus 1, again, would be half the light or a two to one ratio. Now we can do this again by adding another double net. And then what we would expect is we're gonna get a minus two EV or minus two stops, and two stop difference would be a four to one ratio. So let's try that and see how it looks. So now we've added a second double net. So we took our two lights that are equal, we have two double nets, which is gonna remove two stops. As we take a reading over here, it's saying minus two EV. So that's two stops. So that's half and then half again, which would be a quarter, which is a four to one ratio. And what that's really helpful with is it connects the light coming in to how it looks and feels. So you can communicate that with other people on your shoot or as you move forward and you get onto other shoots. And so as you look at this, if you like how a four to one ratio looks and you feel that fits your story, you would use the meter and use the delta symbol to really find what is a four to one ratio in whatever your environment is now, the touchscreen on the L478D is definitely one of the features that'll catch your attention right away, and it makes it really simple to use. But there's a couple other features that are really handy as well. It's got a DSLR mode on here that'll actually allow you to choose DSLR shutter speeds. So as opposed to a 1 48th, it'll allow you to pick 1 50th or 1 60th, so it syncs perfectly with your camera. 
It also lets you put in custom high frame rates. So say you're shooting at 288 frames a second with a red epic. You can actually go in and program that exact frame rate in and get a perfect reading for that camera and that frame rate. Or you could go in and put in say one nine hundredth or one six hundredth. The possibilities are really endless when you can input a custom value for your frame rate. And to really make the most of your meter, you can use the included Sekonic software to really sync up and create a profile for your camera so that it exactly matches the meter. And what you'll notice here on the bottom of the meter is this guide that actually shows you the range of stops. And if you program in your exact camera, it'll actually show you the dynamic range or when you start losing detail in your blacks and whites. And so as you're taking meter readings in your different scenarios, you can actually compare that to this guide and see if you have too much range in your light in a scene or if your camera can properly handle it. And by syncing it up with the software, you're also going to make sure that you get absolutely perfect readings for your camera's sensor every single time. Another huge use of a light meter is for scouting. If you're going around and you're looking at locations, you can use your light meter to see if you have enough light to shoot, as well as how your different lights balance each other out. And so to do that, we're going to turn these lights off first. So now we have just the natural light in this room. And if we were preparing to shoot here, what we would do is expose the dome, We'd place the meter at me and take a reading. And that says F1 at 1 50th of a second shutter and ISO 100. Now, we probably don't have a 1.0 lens. They're very rare. So what that's going to mean is that we need to change something. We're going to have to add light. We're going to have to lower our shutter. We're going to have to increase our ISO. In this situation, what I can do is just increase the ISO on the meter. And right away, I get a live update on what my aperture will be. So assume I want to shoot at, say, 2.8. As I dial up my ISO, I'll see it update right away and show me the aperture. So when I bring it up to 640, it says that my aperture would be 2.8. So if I was to walk into this room and shoot right now, you would need an ISO of 640 at 1 50th of a second to be able to shoot at 2.8. But what we can also do is retract the dome and use this to tell our different lighting ratios to see if we need to add light to one side or another. So I'll take a reading here and that's gonna say 2.8 at 640 ISO. I'll store that in the memory, I'll hit delta, and then I'll rotate to the other side and take a reading. And it's saying minus two. So again, that's about a four to one ratio. So if we wanted something that's more balanced, we could consider bringing in more light or a reflector. But the key is, by really scouting the location and using our meter, we get a sense of what light's already here and how it balances out in the different areas. So you can always use it in a way to effectively tell your story. So let's go behind the scenes in the filming of the final scene for the documentary, I'm Fine Things. Here we're going to be doing Grant's closing monologue, where he wraps up the entire film and what he's learned. Now it's a really important part of the film, so we really want to use our light meter here to make sure that the scene is exactly what we want. We don't want to leave anything to chance. And so we're going to use the light meter to really check the balance of our key, fill, and hair light, as well as the background. Now in thinking about this, I knew that we wanted roughly a 4 to 1 ratio on Grant, so it has some depth to it, but it's not super dramatic. And then we'd want the hair light to be very, very subtle. So we'd probably go about two stops under our key light. So it just barely added, and that way it doesn't feel very produced. And then our background, we'd again want one or two stops under, so that it didn't compete with Grant. And it gave a very dim, warm, and cozy feeling. Altogether, we use our light meter to check all of our different lights and balance them perfectly so that by the time he sits in, we're ready to go and we don't have to spend any time setting things up. After 42 days and 10,000 miles, 53 interviews and 3,500 minutes of footage, we're on the final leg of the road trip, headed home.